So there have been quite a few dongle decks released recently and all of them have been quite interesting. So today we are taking a look at Ify Go Bar. This is the latest dongle DAX I shared for amplifier from Ify Audio. It is priced at 329 US dollars, which is higher than the vast majority of dongle DAX I shared for amplifiers. But at the same time, it is not only promised, but has sonic characteristics that are theoretically and even practically better than most of the stuff that Ify released to date. And I mean the entry level stuff, not if he IDSD Diablo and such, but compared to the entry level offers from Ify, this one tops them, almost all of them. So let's see why they created this. This is a tiny device. I mean, some reviewers have called it large and it is large compared to most dongles, but it is quite tiny comparing it to something like a full sized DAC amp. It has a USB type C input at the top and it has two headphone outputs at the bottom. One of them is in the 3.5 millimeter single ended format and one is in the 4.4 millimeter balanced format. There is more power available on the balanced output than on the single ended output. Both of them have quite a bit of power and this has to be the most powerful dongle that I know of to date. It has the highest driving power and it has the most dynamic and punchy sound. But let's not get ahead of ourselves here. Let's first explore more about it. As with most other companies, we are seeing a Cyrus Logic DAC implemented and it looks like most companies are going for a Cyrus Logic instead of an ESS Sabre or an Asashi Kasei DAC in those dongles. It likely has to do something with the power consumption and the performance relative to the price point of the Cyrus Logic DACs. We have such a strong support for every single file type out there. So we have support for Redbook files, for high resolution files, for DSD, and even for MQA, although MQA will be going away soon. So we have the X space and X bus plus, which are both some kind of enhancers from IFA Audio. X bus plus will give you a little bit of bass, while X space will give you a little bit of treble and a wider soundstage. Both of them are the least intrusive from what I've seen from IFA Audio. So in if you go bar, you will notice them the least. It's like just a little bit of flavoring. They aren't strong flavors here. So the X bass will just give you a bit of extra oom, a bit of extra bass, a little bit of extra impact, but it will not change the sound entirely or drastically. Same for X space. X space I generally notice that only adds a bit of treble. I never heard it as a wider sound stage, just a more airy sound with a higher level of high end. We also have buttons on the if you go bar. We have the on off switch. We have a plus and a minus button, which are typically used for setting the volume, but with some smartphones, you should be able to use those for playback too. And we have the EM match or the IM match, which can be either set to off or you can select it, whether it is affecting the 4.4 millimeter balanced output or the 3.5 millimeter single ended output. I typically leave it to off because I think that it affects the dynamic range a bit. And I think that the sound is more dynamic and more punchy without the IM match turned on. On that note, the output impedance is one ohm, which is rather high for a portable dongle. And I think that for some people you will need the IMH, especially if you have very sensitive EMs and if you don't want to hear hissing. That being said, I do prefer it turned off. And so let's get into the sound of the Ify Go bar. At first, I have thought that this would be a chocolate bar. And some companies in the past did send some chocolate bars and some other candies with their products, which I think is a nice touch. But you know, I'm trying to lose weight, so I'm more happy having a dongle if you go bar than a chocolate if you go bar. So generally the better sound can be found from the balanced headphone output. I think that the sound is just generally better, juicier, more resolute and it just has more punch and more dynamics. This being said, neither of them isn't bad and I think that you would be quite happy with both headphone outputs, but the general sound is incredible. So the overall spaciousness and the overall sound stage of the sound is insanely high. I mean, look at this, this is tiny. It produces a sound that expands way above the confines of your head and the confines of your mind. The, it's just extended. It extends in both width and depth. You can hear music, not just lateral, you can hear it coming from very specific faraway locations. And I think this is quite cool for such a tiny thing. Also, it has a very dynamic presentation, so it can go from really quiet to really loud really well. It doesn't compress the sound. It doesn't force everything to be at the same volume. It doesn't force everything to be loud. It allows music to breathe and it allows music to be presented with a very strong emotion and with a good sense of bound. There are multiple filter settings on the Ify Go Bar and they 
tend to change the sound a bit. So if you are considering equalizing it a bit, I do suggest checking out the filter settings in it. This being said, I will be having more detail in the full written review of how the filters influence the sound. And generally speaking, I think that it has an outstanding performance. For example, comparing it to Shining UA5, which is also extremely strong and I also did both a written and a video review on it, I think that they can trade blows when it comes to technical performance and resolution. But at the same time, I think that if Bar has a slightly higher driving power, this one could drive virtually every single headphone that I have in the entry level range up to the mid range, including Hyphiman Sundara, Hyphiman Ananda Nano, Harmonic Dan Zeus Elite, Cross Zone CZ10, also Sennheiser HD 660S2. So basically everything is drivable out of it and at good volumes, with good control, with no distortion. So everything about the Ifigo bar and its sound is really interesting. I mean, it really sounds really nice and I like that. I like the overall sonic presentation it offers. It drives headphones with authority, but it doesn't have a lot of noise with EMs or in-ear monitors. I would also be willing to say that if you go bar, is in line even with Ify XDSD when it comes to the overall sound. So this is interesting, but Ify XDSD is like one of the best Ify has. It, it is one of their best products, the XDSD. It is also a bestseller product for Ify. So it is surprising to say that such a tiny dongle can compete with the XDSD. But in all honesty, the sound is actually more dynamic, more punchy, and it has a deeper bass with the Ify Go Bar than it has with the XDSD. And I remember critiquing the XDSD for this. It doesn't have a lot of bass while this one this has such a super nice bass super nice low end extension and punch so it is interesting to see how ify has improved over the time the support you typically get from ify is also superb so this is the kind of company that will send you spare parts out of goodwill and out of wanting to keep their brand reputation and out of wanting to keep in touch with their customers and I have seen this happening quite a few times over HeadFi where someone managed to lose like a volume knob or something and IFI team was able to get one to them even for free sometimes. For example, if they attended the show and they told them that they needed that, they managed to get one to them. And I think that is top level customer service and I think that is something to appreciate too about IFI Audio. Overall, I think that IFI Gobar has a strong position in the market. The, it can really provide something that other dongle DACs can't. It can provide a better driving power than most of them, yet the power consumption is not that high. For example, I don't think that it drains my smartphone faster than Shining UA5 or than most dongle DACs. It really doesn't drain that much power and yet it is able to provide such a good driving power. All of which I think boils down to the DAC used. So I think that those new Cyrus Logic DACs have much, much better overall efficiency than ESS or AKM chips did have. And this one is having a dual mono amplifier as far as I've read from the IFI paperwork. But I think the best place to study those technical aspects are in the full written review. Speaking of which, I hope that you will be checking out my full written review. Also, please subscribe to the file heaven if you enjoyed the video. Please leave a like on this video if you found it to be cool. Please share it with your friends. I would appreciate that greatly. I thank you so much for watching and I hope we'll see each other really soon. If you want to donate, I have a PayPal link in the video description. Thank you so much and keep rocking. Bye bye.